speechless, honestly. But what? About the fact that you guys talked about my marriage in such a f***ing disgusting way. It was sexless. Like Here we go! Here the fuck we go! Here the fuck we go! You watched the show, Erin. I did. Do you watch it with a f***ing blindfold over your face? Then you're only upset that he didn't wear a piece of jewelry? I don't like the way you bring I can't hear you all the way down there, what? To her, something like switched me. Where I was. Something happened to me. You lie, and you don't own your sh. Hey yo, what the fuck? He is Frederick in person. We love that. And like Jenna. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Brian Keith, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're going to talk about the Real Housewives of New York, the reunion, part one. And after watching the whole reunion, like literally, the dynamics of the group has changed. And I think I actually want everyone to come back. Um, I know you, some of you guys can't stand Sai, but low key, Sai for me gives me season one um, Lisa Barlow. Like, literally, Lisa was, I, I really didn't pay her no mind. I mean, Jim was like, then she came to the reunion talking about, you know, bad weather, spin it together, cause trouble, boom. That whole situation, it just fueled for the next season. This time, you can see that she's beefing with Aaron. She's beefing with Bren. Obviously, you know, she got a little bit of a situation with um, Uber. I mean, I can see it happening, right? Um, but yeah, so far, it wasn't giving too much. It really won't. I ain't gonna hold you. There's a lot of tears. <laughs> um, Uber tried to get the girls, you know, started. But, you know, people just really pay her dust, to be honest. But... Y'all like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the video. Let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out my flame and lips. You wanna play with me? You can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, one and securing the bag. Alright, so Andy did his intros with all the ladies. You know how y'all doing? The pleasantries, really trying to get into it, how we get into it. And you know, Andy asked the ladies, you know, about being the new Real Housewives of New York, the new Roni ladies. How do y'all feel? And you know, Jenna speaks on you know the constant comparisons that the fans do. You know, people. These are my girls. These are my Roni girls. Oh, they don't give like the other girls. Oh my. Ooh, ooh, I die. All this right, and we already know that they're trying to revamp and redo uh, Bravo as a whole. Anyway, like I feel like ten years from now, there's gonna be a whole crop of new girls. I think that's what it is. Change is good, and we already seen that this situation was a success so i mean hey they start with aaron right her montage come on her and abe real cute boo 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 what's doing homegirl is good i have one very big project coming so i'm super excited jay from pasadena wants to know what it's like working with friends you know aaron you know they basically say that you know she moved from her old home she did not go to tribeca <laughs> but you know she does have a rental so she has a rental for the time being you know that's what really what the girls do just trying to give that ambiance and that lifestyle <laughs> Um, so, you know, they get into Aaron's real own work relationship with Frederick and how, you know, she is the owner of Homegirls and she also piggybacks and just like, you know, Frederick is how he is on TV, off TV. He is the same exact way. And then all of a sudden, when it came from the south of me, Ubu decided to say, I love that. I'm like Jenna. <laughs> Ooh. Because I think TV Jenna is poor me, victim, I'm old, I'm this. And the real Jenna, it's powerhouse. And I'm just like, where in the world that come from? But, you know, it is what it is. Jenna's sitting there like... And being powerful, like, they can exist together. I'm not in a power situation in this dynamic at all. What? Like Uba said, like, I feel like Jenna is, you know, poor me, victim, self-deprecating on camera. And then off camera, I feel like she is, you know, powerhouse woman and i feel like um a little bit to what jenna said because jenna was like i mean i'm not in the power role so i don't need to i feel like what it is is when you're at work and I, i've noticed this by myself too when i'm at work and i'm in charge of like 40 people i am in this mode that you know i gotta get shit done i gotta do me i gotta make sure that we run the plan because if they don't and this is my job if we don't do it everything will be blamed on me so i gotta make sure i put the big boy hat on and do what i gotta do to make sure the ship is sailing in the right direction right but when i'm in my friend group i can let my guard down i can be, well i mean jenna didn't but you know, you can let your guard down. You can, you know, be more softer. You could be 
play in the background. Like me in a relationship, I like playing in the background. I like chilling because I am a leader at work. In my everyday life, I am in charge of the girls. So when I am at home, I like to chill, take like take a back seat. I can lead at times, sometimes I don't have to. Uber feels like, you know, Jenna, you, every time stuff happens, you want to just sit back and just be cool and just be coy. And Jenna's like, if I don't need to express my opinion, I don't have to. I could just sit here and just be fine. And Uber just like, okay, you say that, but you said that you were team Aaron. So what was up with that? And it was like, oh, okay, we're going to, we're going to go to the next thing. Someone else but you excited not- making opinion about people when you are not in the scene. What opinion did I make you about someone? You said you picked team Aaron. We're gonna, we're gonna get. To- we're gonna get back to that, but we're going to the next thing, right? Angie's over here segueing. Aaron asks, um, Andy asks Aaron about, you know, being the head of her family, and she speaks on, you know, her. She gets emotional. Um, we found out that her mother has some type of um, medical issue, and another person in her family had a medical issue, so she, she had a tough summer. And she also speaks of that, you know, her father is a single father for because his, her mom and her dad had her. He got remarried, had four kids, single father of four. Um, And then she had to, you know, he went to work overseas and she had to basically take care of those kids. Became the I grew up of the really family. young, yeah. You know, my dad would go to Israel for work and I'd be 15 years old with four children, like I'd watch them. And it, that's a lot on a 15 year old to take care of four kids. One, it's not blood related. And two, it's just like, she had to grow up fast and she's like that's the reason why i'm just so you know type a i feel like people would have understand this situation with aaron if she would have talked about it because the first time we're hearing about it is right now and you know you were so hell-bent on jessel you were so hell-bent on jenna opening up telling their real story this that and third but we didn't hear nothing about you this is the first time we're hearing about it so that's the thing that kind of irritates me with aaron and Cy, a little bit more aaron it's just that you didn't open up yourself, but when other people try to open up, you chastise them and over here pick their stories apart, or you over here f- try to force their hand and telling and trying to be open when you are open yourself. Oh, type A and tightly wound, like nobody really understands that. Like I have to be. Wow, so that's a lot on your shoulders. So much. So Andy gets on the whole sponsor thing, and Aaron's like, well, you know, since everyone has such an issue with it, I guess, you know, I want to do it in- anymore. I'm just like, girl, I was like, I was like, just because somebody didn't like something don't mean I'm going to cartel what I do to them. I'm going to do what I want to do. If you didn't like it, you just didn't like it. It is what it is. Next. Like, I didn't care. It didn't bother me. Now, looking back, I would not do it because it seemed to bother everybody else. You would totally still do it. Like, for her to just be like, oh, it's, it's just like she's trying to use that as like a cop out. Like, well, y'all didn't like it, so I guess I'm not going to do it. Girl, you had it down at the bottom. Maybe you shouldn't have had it on the invitation. Maybe have it on the back. I don't know. But you did what you did. It was what it was. I didn't think it was that deep. Anyway, who going to be mad at free stuff? If you're going to pay for my party, thank you. <coughs> thank you. But then we go segue on to Aaron Blasting Side on a podcast. This took me out of left because I didn't even hear about the podcast. On a podcast and said the following about Sai. You said, I thought we got along, but all she does is talk about me and her confessionals. Really bothered me. That- it's just funny because it's just like, Aaron's just like, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like Cy switched up. And, you know, at the end of the day, we were cool majority of the show, but she switched up on me. So it was what it was. And Cy's like, girl, you lie and can't take your own shit. What happened to her, something like switched. Me? Where I was- something happened to me? You lie and you don't own your shit. Here we go. Another liar in the group. And so I tell Aaron, like, you know, you went on the podcast to talk all about me and made me the topic of your conversation. And Aaron's like, no, I did it. And so I was like, yes, you did. I have it. And she's like, play it. And the thing about it is like, girl, you say play it like you didn't say it. <laughs> and like, so I was like, oh, so all we're having is cheese. This one's always hungry. This yeah. one's always hungry. And I was like, yeah. I didn't say that, Aaron. Like, she really thought that she didn't have it. Like, girl, play it. If I said that, play it. And what does I do? So I pull her phone out. She played a recording. And you're caught red-handed at this point. So I says, you know, she wants her to stop implying that she is a rude person. And and I feel like she, the whole rude thing is just, like, from feeding off of social media. Um, Hopefully, Sai is not looking at the social media stuff. I saw that she did turn some of her comments off. Um... At the end of the day, I feel like going on these shows like this with public perception, I, if I was going on a TV show, like a uh, competition show, reality TV show, I'm not going on the show to be liked. I'm going on the show to be myself. And if people don't like that, I can't help that. I'm not going to be over here kissing nobody's ass and just like, oh my God, social media. Oh my God. 
because some people just might not like it. Like at the end of the day, we might not like Sai right now, but she might be cool in two or three seasons. It's just a character that they play on the show, not really play, but it's just a character that we see on the show out of all these hours that they film it, right? Andy asks um, Aaron about the whole cheese comment. Like, did you say that all that, did you say that Sai said that all there is is cheese? I misspoke, I should have said it more accurately. Well, I didn't that, that would have said you. Like I, I it's misspoke. a lie, how could you think that a lie would have said? Be honest. I can give a damn about the cheese situation. I really could. I'm happy that, you know, Uber broke up the monotony of this bullshit because I'm just, I was just like, okay, it's cheese. Cool. Yeah. So Uber's like, okay, I want to know why you guys didn't want Jenna on this show. Why didn't you want Jenna on this show? Oh, thank you. <laughs> they play her dust though, but I was like, thank you. Cause I really could give a fuck about what they're talking about. <laughs> Does feel like someone spoke in Uba's ear and gave her one job. It's like Uba, pull it out of Jenna. Pull it out of Jenna. Yeah. Either run her ass off the show or pull it out of her. Right? And when I mean put it out of her, like, you know, we need yeah, Jenna start yelling. <laughs> feel like one of the girls. So Andy brings up a viewer question, right? And basically saying that Aaron referring to herself like, you know, I can only be direct. I can't be fake. Rude. I think sometimes I can come off a little rude and crass and maybe it's something I should work on. He like, Aaron gets the mess started and Uber is like the same way. Uber's like, you know, I don't think Aaron is rude. I think she's polite, she's nice, but she's a shit stir. And she gaslights. So I feel like Uber, um, you know, is feeling the heat on the end of the, of the couch. She's feeling the heat because it's just like she's speaking up like really out of turn and it's a lot of irrelevant things. But I mean, I'm not mad because at the end of the day, somebody got to, somebody got to say something. Everybody just sitting there chilling, <laughs> right? She's trying to get the best started. I'm surprised Brene, but you know. Hmm. So then we segue over to Jenna's package, right? We talk about how, you know, as a kid, Jenna didn't feel attractive. Um, um, and now that she didn't feel attractive um, as a kid, she became like this fashion icon, right? What made me want to pursue a career in fashion? We did, even when we did that healing thing with you, it's like, I remember that woman said to me, tell your seven-year-old. So Jenna lost her mother um, six weeks before filming and she gets very emotional. Um, she had a tough time and a rough childhood and you know, she wished that she actually had like a true, true mother that showed emotion that really gave her that type of childhood that, you know, she probably longed for. Jessel speaks on, you know, Jenna at home and giving her her accolades for being open and human after, you know, the passing of her mother. Um, this was all when she was at um, Jessel's house with Jessel's mom. Um, and I feel like it's like a situation where it's like you relive grief all over again, seeing a friend have that relationship that you long for um, with their parent, right? And, you know, Bryn speaks on, you know, Jenna, how do you feel like when you, you're a parent now and you're showing your child love, like, does it feel weird to express love to your child when you did not have that in return? And it's like, it doesn't happen. You don't feel it. And then no. when it happens, yeah. it's almost like you get into like business mode. It's yeah. like, well, what do I yeah. need to do? Yeah, what yeah, Oh, child. Like, it's one of those things, like, with my dad. Like, as a kid, I felt like my dad was, like, my superhero, right? Me and my dad, we, re we rarely talk. Um, like, there's a lot of things that happened um, when I was a little kid, like abuse, this, that, and the third. And there's a lot of things I don't just talk about. I mean, mom, before she passed, my dad was, like, that guy. He's funny, outgoing, charismatic, everything. But after she passed, it feels like, you know, he passed away with her. And he, the version that he is now is not the version that I would want him to be. So it's hard to explain. I talk about this sometimes with therapy. When I was on, <laughs> in college, girl, I went to therapy. Like, <coughs> like, girl, that's all. Hopefully I can get back into that right space with my dad. But a lot of things have happened and transpired where I can't allow certain disrespectful things to keep transpiring. So we'll see what happens, but not too much about me. <laughs> Andy asked Brenda Upa about, you know, the view, the view reactions to their stories. I have heard people say that I had a really bad relationship with my mom and because of you, I made a phone call, I went to visit. Like, you know, Brenda opened up a lot, Uba opened up a lot. Both gets emotional and you know, it's really hard. And Uba says that, you know, she wished that she had her mother back. And it touched me a lot because I'm already thinking about, you know, my dad still being here with us and you know, me not really talking to him. We'll see in the future. So, you know, they're breaking down and Andy asked Sai about her experience as well. And Sai's like, you know, it's tough. Um, I don't want people to see me as, you know, 
weak, sad. I just want people to see me happy. Much in my life. I'm broken in the inside, but at the same time, I don't want to tell anyone that. I want everyone to look at me and feel happiness and positivity. And you know, that's why I kind of relate to Sai because I feel the same way. I'd rather just be funny, make people laugh, be jovial, but it's one of those things where it's like coming from, I have to get to a place where expressing my true feelings um, is not related to feeling weak. So that's something I have to work on as well, you know? So I, I relate to Sai on that. Um, Andy asked Jessel, like, do you think Sai achieved that, you know, wanted to be a happy, positive person? And Jessel's like, you know, I try to break through with her. I try to relate to her, but it just didn't work. It did not, the plane did not land. Almost took it upon myself to, to try to break through. I really wanted to get to know who you are, but it, it was tough. I'm not someone who shared. So Sai's like, you know, I don't run around telling grown women my feelings. Um, but you asked for Jenna to open up and tell her feelings. Um, and she already felt uncomfortable. So I'm just like, it's kind of weird. It's, it's really like a hypocritical moment because you want Jenna to open up so much when you question mark, don't open up so much. I feel like we learned the most about Jenna and we learned the most about Jessel. Funny enough, right? Because the girls chastise them all the time. Now, I feel like Jenna and Jessel opened up to us, the viewers, watching it, but to the other girls, not so much. And maybe because they have a camera in their face, they don't feel comfortable, I don't know. After everybody, you know, we get on the whole chastising Jenna for the for the longest, Aaron basically apologizes to Jen, um, Jenna for basically starting the mess about the whole flying to Anguilla. And, you know, Jenna was like, you know, at the end of the day, I spoke to Aaron. I, when I saw it, I thought it was fucked up because you twisted my words and made it to be something negative when it wasn't. Um, so I was like, yeah, you know, Jenna, we gave you a hard time. And, you know, it was like daggers at the table. So we apologize for that. I was just in that moment. I was just like, well, girl, fuck this. Because, yes, y'all gave Jenna a hard time. Because, but y'all tried to destroy me. So fuck that. But, you know, she didn't say nothing. It was what it was. But if that was just that's what I would say. So Andy tells Bryn about Jenna promoting her, her pie, um, her Andy tells Bryn about, you know, Jenna promoting her products and sponsorships versus side doing it. And Bryn's like, you know, I don't feel like it was um, a difference. But, you know, Jenna kept bringing it up. Right. Besides, she doing it for her job, <laughs> for her living. So, you know, Sai feels that, you know, she gets a lot of stuff, too gifted so to me i think in a marketing way so I, she kept yeah. giving us gifts i've never had a friend who gives me a gift almost every single yeah. time she felt like jenna was trying to like buy their friendship and i can see that uh, this one thing i said during one of my reviews i think on episode six or seven that maybe it's just her love language like we're over here just like oh my god i can't believe jenna is over here bringing me stuff maybe that's just how she show her affection I don't know. The girl got money, money to blow, but I'll do it. Me crazy. Is gift giving your love language? Yeah, love her language. I love Uber segment comes on and you know, I'm just like, here we go. <laughs> here we go. And you know, so Uber and Mr. CT, Connecticut, are still together. And Andy asked Uber, like, did you want him private or did he want to be private? And she's like, he wanted to be private because of his job. And like I said, it makes that situation much more worse because he wanted to be private because of his job, but you have these three women, Bryn, Aaron and Sai running around telling her business. But like I said before, Uber, if you didn't want it out, you should have never said it on camera. You said it on camera. Um, we used over here at Swingers with um, Aaron Kiki and then all of a sudden, Andy asked Uber, like, you know, how does it feel about booking work at your age in this uh, age obsessed industry? And she's like, you know, it's a great era because, you know, modeling has become so inclusive. Brands are being so aware of people of different shapes, sizes, colors, and, you know, even down to disabilities. Like everybody can model. Everybody can have that dream that they want. Right. We bring up the three who tell secrets. So Andy asked Sai, like, why were you so angry at Bryn when you broke Uber's trust? You get so angry at Bryn for asking Uber about Mr. Connecticut when you broke Uber's trust yourself. That is a great question. The million dollar question, because I was still trying to figure that out my damn self. So I was like, I'm harder on Bryn because we're so close. I was just like, girl, that's not answering the motherfucking question. I think I'm a little bit harder on Bryn because Bryn and I were very close. And so I trusted you with a secret. The secret that you shared on camera? That, like, that's irrelevant. <laughs> So I, um, Bryn's like, okay, but you said it on camera. <coughs> so I was like, yes, I did say it on camera, but I told you not to say anything or or the place. 
And because she like Uber didn't want us to say the place. And Uber's like, that is true. That is true. And she's like, you know, I didn't she, I didn't want y'all to say anything, but I didn't want you to say the place. Um She's like, because at the end of the day, like if I want to go out in public with this man, I can just go ahead and do that. But I just want to keep it private until everything goes public. Um so I apologize to Uber um for telling the girls basically. So Andy asked um Sai like, okay, so did you tell Bryn not to say C T? And she said, I told her um she shouldn't repeat it. And she shouldn't repeat any of it. And I'm just like, so you telling us that Bryn shouldn't have repeated any of it, but you told girl the hypocrisy how can you sit up here and say that so Bryn's like you didn't tell me that and if you did of course i would have kept the secret girl no you would not because Bryn, you are messy as hell like girl as quick as you told it then you know you still told it finally side si gets to the point she's like look i was upset with myself for telling and you know at the end of the day, i took it out on you bingo that that i broke her trust i took it out on you no, and i apologize you. Yeah. really sorry I'm really that's sorry. Okay. I love you, okay. Brynn, and I apologize. I have not really... And Brynn starts to cry. She's like, you know, at the end of the day, you cut me off for months since filming, and, you know, that's just doesn't sit well with me. <laughs> I'm like, damn, girl. Brynn tells her that, you you know, you went on a smear campaign to take me down. Aaron's like, you know, I see both sides because it was implied. And, you know, no one basically actually said, don't say anything. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And, you know... Andy's like, you know, so what's the circle of trust? And Jessel's was like, the circle of trust is where they sit down and talk about everybody. They talk about everybody. So that's the circle of trust. They sit around and talk about everybody and smear their name. It's the circle of trust. We were just well, I don't know what this is. It's where they talk about everyone. But the other part, the other part tells Aaron, you know, at the end of the day, you're the reason that all this started. Um, and Aaron's like, okay, so it's my fault. She's like, when you brought up David to Tassai, that's what made her respond that way. And Aaron's like, okay. It is what it is, whatever. So Andy asks Jessel. Jessel, um, Jessel says, like, you know, I'm speechless because you talked about my marriage. And you, they are just like, okay, it's sexless? <laughs> about the fact that you guys talked about my marriage in such a f***ing disgusting way. It was sexless. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Oh, Jessel's like, okay, you watch the show, right? Huh, Aaron? You watch the show? And Aaron's like, yeah. She said, do you watch it with a blindfold on? <laughs> <laughs> Why was Aaron gag? Aaron was like, uh, uh. <laughs> You watched the show, Aaron. I did. Do you watch it with a f***ing blindfold over your face? No, I didn't watch okay. I don't remember. Well, <laughs> Child. Um, Jessel says, um, you know, you brought up he doesn't wear a wedding ring, implying that he cheats. And Aaron's like, no, that's not what I imply. I, you know, Abe doesn't wear a wedding ring, so that's what I'm like, girl. Talk, they talk about your husband. Don't talk about mine. <laughs> Brynn's like, you know, out of all the stuff to be mad about, the weathering was what did it, right? And so I tells her, like, girl, let her talk. She doesn't need for you to talk. And Bryn's, Bryn, <laughs> she was like, girl, I can't hear you from all the way down there. Girl, huh? What? Huh? Oh. Oh. You're only upset that he didn't wear a piece of jewelry? I don't that's 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 huh? that's 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 I can't hear you all the way down there. What? Right? 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 Read my lips. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sai versus Bryn, the beef, Loki might be good next year. So that's why I was like, bring her back. I don't care, give a fuck if y'all like her. Bring her back. Aaron's like, okay, so you're blaming me for everything, but not Sai. That's crazy. And Jess was like, oh, don't worry. We're going down the couch. Oh, now that's how you clear up it. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, Jess, I'm here for it, girl. So Andy segues to, um, segues back to Brandon and Sai and like, where are y'all, how are y'all doing? Uh, and Sai's like, we're fine. Brandon's like, okay, you call me a slut, broke, a whore. You talk about where I lived at. You talk about how, where I work. And Sai's like, I never said that. Um, she was like, who, from who? And Uber was like, I have a thousand dollars from Aaron. <laughs> calling me names, I calling me a, said anything. a I, slut and a whore, and like I've never said any of those things. Yeah, I've from heard. who? I will give you a thousand dollars from Aaron. <laughs> Sai's like, um. I have said, she was like, if I have said any of that, I would have said it to your face. I'm not gonna just over here say it and just not say it to your face. So I was like, you know, I don't even know what you do. And she was like, girl, yes, you do know what I do because at the end of the day, I signed your contract for your business back in 2017. And you know, I work for real nine to five. I said, ooh. I don't know what you do for a living, Beyonce. You do know what I do for a living when we're friends. I signed your contract on Avino Baby, so what? I knew that. Back in 2017? I, 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 I actually, I, I, I actually I, I, work a nine to five. I mean, ooh, ooh. See, this is what we kinda needed. 
Because low-key Bran knows how to argue. The other girls would be over here oh, bah, 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 mumbling. Mm -mm. So, you know, at the end of the episode, you know, we get into Jessel's package. And, you know, they talk about her sex life is much better. Jessel over here brings, like, you know, she has no regrets of bringing up any of her stuff. But, you know, baby number three, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. We go into one of the rumors off the show on the show. And Andy asks, did you move from Dallas to New York for the show? And Jessel's like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I came to New York for the opportunities. But when the, twins, yeah. when the twins were born in LA, I realized I needed to be closer to my parents. And it was just like, why not move to London? I mean, TBD. So Jess was like, you know, I moved, I moved to New York um, for 10 years and then we went to Dallas because um, Pavel was starting our business, uh, a company. And then we moved back a year and a half ago. And it's like during casting. <laughs> I said, Andy, you really want that to be the narrative, right? And Andy asked Sai about Jessel um, lying, about, um, lying about her sex, sex life. And Sai says, like, you know, I just don't feel y'all have chemistry. I don't feel like, you know, it is what it was. You know what? It's none of my business. I'm sorry. I shouldn't comment on anyone's marriage but my own. Few minutes later. It just doesn't feel like you have a connection, but that is. And I'm just like, and she's like, you know, I'm not going to speak on your marriage because that's not my place to speak on your marriage. I just feel like you don't have chemistry, this, that, and the third, and y'all just don't like each other. I'm like, girl, you're not going to speak on the marriage, but you just did. The fuck? <sighs> Low key, when it comes to Jessel, I don't give a damn if she moved <laughs> from Dallas to New York. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Girl, you're on the show. It was what it was. I don't care. But y'all, that was her own reunion part one. It was, for me, I learned a lot. Um, you know, it was cute. <laughs> well, y'all, let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Brian Keith, LG, Black Pete. Bet you didn't know we the Holy Trinity. Now let the God stop a dollar break your head. Step into the room and get up in the bed. It's sweet. That's cause I'm good. It tastes sour cause I'm better than the hood. Uh, cause I get you hyped but when I'm running all around cause I excite ya. Let me talk, let me talk real quick. You can't even get, get with the shit. You wanna go toe to toe with my flow? The cyber candy all I really have to flow. Uh,